So what we're gonna talk about is avoiding embarrassing and costly mistakes. And I told my wife, I said, I need a name tag. I said, I found one. I'm a recovering perfectionist. And my wife informed me that I was not a recovering perfectionist. I was a acknowledge, I was acknowledged perfectionist, not a, not a practicing. I hadn't learned it yet, right? So here's my wife and I going sailing. And uh, this particular boat, I arrived to go sailing, had never chartered a boat before. The guy said he was gonna have a checklist for me. So we got to the boat. He, I, he, he noticed I had a checklist. I said, you got a checklist? He said, yeah, we'll do mine first and then we'll do yours. So we did his, it took 10 minutes, mine took an hour and a half. So I checked the boat, I had this big checklist and he was gonna take me out and he was gonna show me how to do things with the boat, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure that I knew what I was doing. After I went through a checklist, he says, take it. Because he knew that I had prepared. Then he, then he found out I was an engineer, so he understood a little better. So there's some unmentionables that I discovered in preparing this talk. And I think they all start with the letter P. And the first one is perfectionism. So that's the first one. And has anybody in here ever bought more than one domain? Has anybody spent days and hours trying to change the little header picture? Has anybody spent days trying to figure out what font to use on your website? Actually, so there's a, there's a lot of those things that most of us just, it just had to be perfect. And then all of a sudden we realized we actually had the right content. That was, to me, that's the hard part. Everybody agree with it? It's writing the content is really the hard part. So I decided that I would uh, make a list. So I did my to-do list. So this was my to-do list. To write a to-do list. Now what am I doing? It starts with a P. I'm procrastinating. I'm procrastinating, and how many of you procrastinated? <laughs> how many of you have gone to a work camp meeting and didn't have a website up and went to meetings for six months and still didn't have a website up? Did anybody meet that? Oh, interesting. So you're procrastinating. So you need to start. My wife finally convinced me that I needed to do the same thing because I had a little website, still do, with my name on it which hasn't been updated in over a year. But it took me five years to put it up because I kept thinking about it and it was a spare time thing for me. By the way, I am not a developer. I'm not a designer. I actually have a full-time job doing something that has nothing to do with WordPress. I just like helping other people with it. And I've never made a penny off of WordPress. So, so per perfectionism leads to procrastination and that leads to paralysis. That was my conclusion. No action. Agree? <laughs> so this guy didn't have any problem. I wish I had speakers and everything. Has anybody ever seen this website? This guy had no problem with any of those things. He put it up. In fact, if it had sound and I went online, this is flashing, it's got sound. This guy's got great traffic. Looks awful. But he probably knew one thing maybe some of us hadn't thought about. He probably knew who his target audience was really well. That's probably why he does so good. Anybody ever heard this? WordPress is so easy, my grandmother can use it. Anybody, everybody believe that? When you got started, is that the way you felt? Is that what all the experts told you? Probably. Well, don't believe it. If you've not, how many here have not started? Still don't have a website. There you go. I have a website, but I don't do WordPress. Good. Well, everybody kept telling me that. Kept telling me how easy it was. I'd already done, I already had done a Joomla site. So I had some background, but then I started using WordPress, and I was like, my gosh, this thing's awkward the way it's laid out. Well, not much of that's changed. But the thing is, WordPress is easy, if you, depending on what you compare it to. 
if it's compared to uh, Joomla, most people say Joomla's harder. I don't really think it is, but that's because I have a little bit more logical mind. And some people say that Drupal is better, and I've never messed with Drupal. Anybody, I think there's some Drupal developers in here. I don't think Drupal's easy. But then there's things like, uh, what is it, Wix? What's the other one, Square? Weebly and all those things. I've kind of played around with those. They're easy, but they don't do very much. So don't believe it. So these mistakes, this is the conclusion that I came to. You can probably add some. I came to the conclusion that some of these mistakes that we make, which we may not even know we make, they can tarnish our brand image. They can cause poor Google rankings. They can, can all, they can cause financial loss. And you can run the risk of legal action depending on what the mistake is. So I'm gonna talk about the, the, what I call the three big mistakes. And you may not even believe some of these, but I'll tell you a story that's actually happened. The first one is not owning your own domain. Does anybody in here not own their own domain that would admit it? I hope that's not true, but I know somebody that did. Does anybody not own their own web hosting device? Is anybody in here paying? Don't admit it. I hope that's not true. And I bet you there's at least one person in here that doesn't have a backup on their system. And they keep procrastinating and they don't have a backup because everything seems to be going normal. So this is a true story. I started to put the guy's picture up here and I decided somebody in the room might know him so I wouldn't put it up here because he's a professional. He's actually a doctor. So I decided not to put his picture up here even if I didn't use his name. So this is a, an anonymous person. But I got a call about a year ago and this, this friend, actually a young friend, I'm probably old enough to be his father. And he called me up and he says, Charlie, I got a problem. I said, what's the problem? He says, my web developer just called me. And he says that the host, or he's leaving the host he's with, and he doesn't have a backup. I said, what do you mean he doesn't have a backup? He's a developer, surely he has a backup. I said, who's the host? He said, WP Engine. I said, well, I don't believe that. They're a quality hosting company, I don't believe that. And I said, well, do you pay for the hosting? He said, yeah. I said, who do you write your check to? He said, the developer. Uh-oh, uh we got a problem. So I went and looked up to see who owned it. So then I asked him, I said, well, your domain, do you pay somebody for that every year? Oh, no, I pay the developer for that. I'm like, uh-oh, he doesn't even own his own domain. So what eventually happened, this guy's a pretty smart guy. And what happened was I was able to communicate with the, with the developer and got him to give us the name. So I got his domain name. The trouble was getting the backup because he said he didn't have one. So anybody here use WP Engine? I don't use them, but they were awesome. I called them up. They told me all the legalities. You can't, they can't give you a backup because you don't own it, yada, yada, yada. I said, well, is there any way we could get it? I said, first of all, do you have a backup? Because the guy told us he had no backup. So he said, just a minute. Flipped around for about a minute. He said, oh yeah, we got a backup. It's only about two weeks old. I said, great, now all we gotta do is figure out how to get it. I said, is there any way we can get it? And legally, I don't know if you guys know this, but legally, they cannot give that backup to you because you're not the owner of that account. You do not own that. It might be your business, but you do not own that backup. You do not own that web account. Anybody know that? Some people don't know that. So what happened was we tried to get it from him and WP Engine was very helpful. They ended up, uh, I'm trying to think what they did, they ended up creating a ticket and like the other guy had entered it and then they tried to get him to approve giving it to the real owner and he wouldn't do it. So now the real owner has his website domain, but he doesn't have his backup. Luckily, he had the backup of everything on his site. I offered to help him. He said, no, I believe I can do it. He reloaded his entire site himself. 
and rebuilt it using the same thing. He had enough files on his machine that he rebuilt it. So lesson learned, own your own domain and own your own web host. Now I'll tell you a true story. Now this was back when I was younger before I started making mistakes. No laughs, you can see the teeth. So I started my first site was a WordPress site back in 2007 maybe. And I built the site it got transferred from one host to another. I moved it, kept building some other sites for friends and putting them on my site. And one day I was working in the, what some people might call the back end. And this was before the current release of Control Panel, if everybody knows what Control Panel is. So I was messing around, I'm a hacker, messing around, and I don't know how I did it. I erased all of the rep websites. All of them, not one of them, all of them. Now today, and I, I haven't tried this, but I don't think you could do that anymore because you'll at least get a warning that you're about to race, I think, and then it goes into a, like it does on your, like, it, like a recycle bin on your machine. But back then, I don't, it, it, I don't know if it worked that way or I panicked, but I raced the whole, I, wait, I raced about six websites. None of them had backups. So I thought, well, the hosting company, they keep a backup of all this stuff. Surely they got one. Yeah, they had one. 30 days old. Everybody, anybody ever had to do this? That would admit it. I see some nods. And I think they charged $25 at that time to recover it. It's probably more than that now. So don't depend on that. Do not depend on that. Make your own backup. That was the lesson. And everybody knows to make a backup, but where do you put it? I don't ever hear this discussed. Where do you put the backup? Everybody in here knows to do a backup, but where do you put it? You could put it Dropbox, uh, one on the right, that's Vault Press. Uh, then uh, let's see if I got a little, that right there, that's Rackspace. You can put it on a USB. You can put it on a remote drive. You can put it in your Gmail account or whatever. You can put it on your, uh, Google Drive, or you could put it up on Amazon. Those are, those are some choices. There's a million other choices you could have to put your backup. Now, how many of you in here have a backup? We won't say how many don't. How many have a backup? And let's, let's take a vote. Who's on Dropbox? Who's got it on Dropbox? Nobody? Okay. Who's got it on Vault Press? Nobody. Who's got it on Rackspace? Probably a, a developer, right? Who's got it on a USB or on a drive off of their computer? Okay. Uh, in mail somehow, in mail. Got it as a mail. Who's got it in Amazon? Anybody? Nobody. There you go. Who's got it on their web host? Oh. What happens if your web host goes down? You ever thought about that? If your website's on the host and your backup is on the host, isn't that like having your backup on your computer? Same, same thing, or as they say in the South, same difference. So you might, it, it might be okay to keep one backup there, but you better have another one somewhere else. Don't let the host be the only place you have a backup. Because if the host goes down, if it's on the same computer as your host machine is, and your host goes down, you may lose your backup and everything. Now, how many people actually know how to restore the backup? So the rest of you guys have a backup, but you have no idea how to get it back into the computer if it goes down, right? So hopefully you have a friend <laughs> or you go to a word, a, a, a word camp or you go to a WordPress meetup and hopefully you can find somebody that can get it back in for you. But it would probably be a good idea if you actually practiced, create a dummy site, create a subdomain of your name and actually practice putting that back in at some point to make sure you know how to restore it. 
otherwise, I don't know how much, how much does somebody charge to restore a website in here? Do you guys so much about? Give me an idea. A couple hundred dollars? Probably, pro probably a couple hundred dollars to restore your website. So it probably would pay you to know how to do it. Plus, they probably don't really want to do it. They probably do it because they're nice. So another takeaway. Know how to restore your website. Okay, here's the top three legal mistakes that people can make. And I'll talk about two of them, but brand name. Make sure you understand this one. Images, how many of you guys are um, designers and get images off the web and stuff like that? So be careful. I discovered that, we won't talk much about that one either, but I discovered the other day that you can actually go to images.google.com and you can take your image that you want to use and drag it into the little box where you normally type and it will actually look at that image and find all the images like that on the internet and where they are. What's funny is you can go buy one and then you can go search and find all the people that didn't buy it, but they already have it. Interesting. And the last one is be careful with company brand and product logos. So I'll give you an example of one of these. Anybody know this guy? Anybody ever seen this guy? I ought to give a prize if somebody knew this guy. This guy is Dustin Hartzler. He's actually a happiness engineer. He used to have a, well he still does, he has a podcast, he has a website and a blog called Your Website Engineer. So he, he's now an, an employee of Automatic. So if you listen to one of his podcasts, he tells you about what happened when he first started. And he called his website, let's see if I can get this right, Your WordPress Engineer. Is that all right? Absolutely not. You know why? You want to share? What, why is that not all right? Correct. Is there something you can do that's close if you wanted to in your domain? You guys know the answer to this one, right? You can use WP, right? WP Beginner, WP whatever. You can do that, but you cannot use WordPress in the primary domain. And the way he found out about it was he actually, when he started out, he said, and he shared this in one of his podcasts, he actually went to 99designs to get a, a logo or something. And the guy that was, one of the guys that was, I guess, bidding on the, the logo said, Dustin, do you know you cannot use that domain? And he was like, what? So he didn't know. But he quickly changed it by about his third podcast. He had relabeled and rebranded himself. Anybody know this guy? It's a guy, and I, how would you pronounce the last name? First name is Jeff. WordPress Foundation has a lawsuit against this guy as of last month. I don't know where this stands, and probably can't see that, but. Basically, they've got a suit against him for using the WordPress name in the domain. He's got about three domains. And he's being pretty obnoxious about it. He's gonna push it, so he's got an attorney because WordPress has filed a lawsuit against him for using that. There's an interesting article on it on WT Tavern. This was done June 23rd, so this is not that old which I thought was also interesting because when I saw this, I noticed a mistake in their article. Anybody, I don't know if you guys could see this from back there. I'm afraid to go up there. Anybody see the mistake? It's probably not big enough. Let's see how good you really are. Anybody see the mistake? The guy's name is Jeff. What does the first line say? Joff. <laughs> Joff. How do you pronounce that? Joff? Yeah. So that one kind of snuck in there.
So I don't know how many of you ever read this, but this is, I don't know if you can see this one either, but it says, I have to get over here so I can see it. It is not okay to use as part of your company product logo or brand itself. In other words, you can't use WordPress as part of your brand name. You can't use it as part of your logo. Is anybody in here with automatic? Nobody? Can you uh, take the logo and kind of twist it around and look kind of like it was WordPress? Is that okay? I don't think so. I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think it's okay. But I've seen a couple sites where people have done that. I don't think that's okay. I would advise against it. So we'll switch gears a little bit. So there's something bad wrong with this website, in my opinion. And you don't even have to read it to be able to see it. This is in a totally different area. We're off of the three topics now, so this is a totally different area. Anybody see anything from a marketing standpoint that's wrong with this? Anybody? You see anything missing? There's something missing, big time. What is it? Anybody repeat what she said? I'm hard to hear. Oh, uh, okay. Largest what? Well, the big thing I noticed that was missing on it was there's no place to sign up on their email list. And how many of us have a website even now that doesn't have a place for people to sign up on it? It's got contact us, but that's a contact page. That's not a uh, sign up for their email. Still not sure I heard you. Right, there, there isn't on this one, but good catch. I, I actually went to that. So another big mistake, not putting a sign up on your site from day one. Don't wait, why, why, even if you don't have a lead magnet, what's called a lead magnet, where you're gonna give a ebook or something away, even if you don't have that, at least put it, put it up there. It would be much better if you had a lead magnet and you were giving away something to, you know, to encourage people to sign up on your site. But I would do it from day one, don't wait. Now my site, which has not been changed in over a year, doesn't have any lead magnet and I'm working on a brand new site, so it will definitely have that on it. By the way, I have a real job, so I don't get to do this stuff much, but I enjoy it. So here's an interesting curve here. And I'll tell you the mistake in a minute, you can figure it out real quick. Look at the, this came from Walmart, by the way. I think Amazon did a similar study. This was from a study that Walmart actually did. And what it's basically showing, without getting into the details, it, it, it's showing that in the first zero to one second, that's the conversion rate. So if your website loads in one to two seconds, look what the drop is in conversion. And I will venture to guess, most of us in this room have a website that loads in two to three seconds or more. So if that's the case, how many people are gonna to come to your website and not even visit it? We talked about SEO, we talked about SEO earlier. Leah, you in here still? She didn't even, didn't even come to listen to me. But th that's a biggie for SEO. So Google looks at the performance of your website. So not only do your users may not stay on your website because of the performance, Google's dinging you for that. Now here's one way to speed it up. And I don't know why everybody doesn't do this because most of it's, it can be free. It, Everybody know what a CDN is? Probably don't, have never heard it, most of you. By the way, how many of you are at, or would, would say are at the beginning level? This, and this is what I hope to get. Okay, good. So a CDN actually stands for Content Delivery Network. And really what it is, if you want to think about it this way without getting too technical, it's basically other machines all over the internet that are caching your content. 
So like on your computer, when you call up a website, it caches it on your computer, all those pages. Well, on the internet, not only can it be cached on your machine, it can also be cached on maybe a machine that is closer to you than where, your, than where the host company is. So it's like cache on the internet for more than just pictures, but we won't go there. But the nice thing is, you can get one of them for free. Now somebody, some techno person in here might say that it's not a CDN, but most of you can probably get Cloudflare. Is that right? Cloudflare for free. Most hosts offer it for free. Or you could do things like uh, Amazon. That's almost free. Because Amazon can be your CDN, and they're almost free, and they're all over the place. So what that means is when your pictures or whatever get loaded, they're not coming from your host, they're coming from that CDN, which is sitting closer. So you can buy a host hosting service for $3.95, get the Cloudflare for free, and your website will, will run faster than WP Engine. Maybe. Maybe. So here's another big mistake. This is not as big a mistake as it used to be. Anybody see anything wrong with this? This is actually a screen capture from my phone. What's wrong with this website? Oh, come on. What is it? It's not mobile optimized at all, is it? No. So you have to sit there and pinch it. So hopefully everybody's website in here is mobile responsive. And that will depend on the WordPress theme you're using or framework or whatever that you're using will, will help with that. Or if you're starting from zero and you're a developer, which you'd have to be to make all this work, you probably won't want to do that if you're just starting out unless you're a developer. You want to use a theme that does this. So this one is the WordCamp. Is Corey in here? This is his website. You want to see anything wrong with their website? Let's see if I can do this. Can you want to see that? What does it say up there? It says just another website. Just another WordPress website. Anybody have that on their website? You have trouble getting rid of it? If you're just starting out, that's probably one of the things you'll, that'll happen. Now, to be honest, I put that there. That's not really on the website. I just wanted to pick on somebody. But I searched the other day to see if I could find one on any other website, and it's very, very easy to find this. Let's see. So you see that one, you can, it's, it's kind of hidden right up there. You see it right there? Everybody know how to get rid of that? If you don't know how to get rid of it and you have it on your site, you should probably go to the happiness bar and they'll show you. If I'm there, I'll show you. Here's another one. This one may not be as important as it used to be, but did you know that if you have a website with your name on it or any name on it, that you actually have two websites? You have one that's WW, that name, and you have one that doesn't have the WW on it. And Google used to, and I'm not sure if they still do this, some of the experts in here might know the answer to this, but they used to distinguish the rankings on those two websites. Google considered them different websites www.myname.com would be different than without the www. And what that would do to you is that messes up your rankings because now, depending on what people type in as to your ranking, so if you merge them together into one, it's gonna merge the rankings. Now I think Google's finally gotten smart enough, but I tried this the other day and actually looked at a number of websites and tried to figure out if it made a difference in the rankings because there's a little plug-in you can, not plug-in, but extension in Chrome where you can tell what the rankings are. And I couldn't see any difference. But there is a place, there is a setting in Google um, Webmaster Tools 
where you can actually tell Google which is the one you want to go by. So that's, you go there, tell it which one you want to go by, so they will know which one is the right one, and they will take all the traffic, not traffic, but they'll take everything else that comes to the other one, and they'll move the ranking. Yeah, you're, you're telling Google that you want your domain, this is, the, this is the name you want to go by. Or you tell it this is the name, and then when you do your business cards or do anything like that or publish anything inside, you make sure, don't publish this one, publish this one. Now, there's other things that you can do to make this one change to this one once it's asked for. But when you publish it on a business card, publish the one you want, decide which one it is. Is there a feeling as to which one is better now? Or? Well, there's a couple things that I've found out that come to play, and I'm not the expert, but one thing is that if, if the domain name is long, people will tend not to put the www in front of it, because that makes it even longer. If they type it in there, that's all right, it still works. Uh, the other thing is that I've seen, and I can't remember which way this works, when you use a CDN, depending on which way they're set up, and I can't remember which way this works, it may get, they become the, they become the DNS, so they're, they're the ones deciding where your website is, right? But it depends on which one of those goes to, the D, it goes to that server first, and then which one gets redirected back there from your server, and I never can remember which way it is. So there is a difference. If I was worried about performance, I, I will find out from somebody if you've got a CDN, which way to set that up, I don't know. What is this, anybody ever seen this? What is it? What is this? Everybody, anybody ever seen this come up on a display? Nasty, isn't it? This is a 404 error. Now this one's nasty because it happens to be coming from Microsoft. That's why it's so nasty. If you'll notice, oops, if you'll notice down there, whoops, oh man. I gotta put my glasses on to see. Yeah, so if you did it again, if you look, uh, if you look right down here, 404, but if you look closely, this is coming from a Windows server. That's why it looks so nasty. But, can't we do something about that? There's a way to do something about this. This is from uh, WP Beginner. So what he's done is he's made a special 404 error page. So when somebody goes to his site and he types in a page for which there is none or makes a typographical error, it goes to this page. So he kind of makes fun of it up at the top and then he gives you some call to actions further down in there, you'll see some call to actions that he's put in there. And then he's actually got some blog posts in there and I've got a second page. It's actually, or this is actually the same page further down. Kind of hard to scroll in PowerPoint. So what he's done is he wants to make sure that customer doesn't get away from him. So if somebody accidentally types that in or types in something wrong, it goes to that page so he can help them out rather than get on that nasty looking page. Now some of the uh, frameworks or child themes or whatever that you guys are using may or may not have a special place to actually go create this page. Plus there are plugins that, that you can make this page from and any time there's a 401 error then it will go to that page that you created rather than going to something that looks nasty. Do I see anything wrong with this one? 
different subject. Okay. You want to tell me what's wrong with that URL? Why that's so nasty looking? Ever heard of permalinks? When you're in WordPress, you can set up permalinks, so you can set up whether it's uh, the date, the year, the blog title, yada, yada, yada. If you don't change that, at least the default was, it may actually depend on which host you're on as to how they do the default, but the default setting, I think, out of the box is actually used to be the permalink looks like that. So you can change that. So if you haven't changed that, you can change it. Is that going to do Google any good? Probably not. And actually, if we look further down the page, uh, no, that's not on this one. So you don't want to have that up there. one of these companies? Most of you? And I put the ones up here who were at the, some of the sponsors' names I put up there so we know where they were. So if most of you got your domain name, did you purchase it from one of these three? Most of you? Anybody hosting their site on one of those domains? Or one of these? Over here, okay? And most of you are using, well, you may be using some other things in there. How many of you bought your domain name from your web host? Okay? So what happens if I put those two together? I can do that. I can buy hosting services from GoDaddy. I can buy my domain from any of those. What happens if I put them on the same machine? Remember the backup problem? Same problem. If they're on the same machine and it goes down, how are you going to move your website? If that company goes out of business, site goes down. What are you going to do? Now, technically, it may actually not be on the same physical box, but if they're on the same host or the same domain registrar and you've got everything in one place, you've got the likelihood of losing everything if that company goes out of business, their system goes down, they get hacked, whatever. Now, if I've got it like this and my web host, let's say I'm with SiteGround and my web host goes down, they've got a big problem. Can I, what do I do? My domain server's over here, or domain registrar's over here, my web host is over here, and my web host goes belly up and they get hacked. My website's on that site. What do I do? Anybody? Find another web host to destroy. Put your backup in there? But they're down. Is that what you said? I said find another web host to destroy your site. Okay. Find some other web host, he said. Okay. Where do I go to tell the other web host that my site has moved from there to the new one? Where do I go? Excuse me? You go to the registrar. Right? But the registrar's over there. It's on the same place. So how are you going to move it? You can certainly load it there. you got the backup. But how are you going to repoint from that web host, who's also your domain registrar, how are you going to tell it where your new website is if it's down and been hacked? Say it again. Are you recommending that we have one company that actually we bought our domain from that holds our domain and one company that we host our website with? Yes. And I would pick, I mean, these are three good ones. I picked GoDaddy. That's the one I picked for my domain. So all of my domains are at GoDaddy, but none of my websites are there.
Well, I think what you're talking about, and this is where it gets confusing, my flipper. You're talking about the DNS box itself. So this box down here is what really tells everything on the internet to go to your website, which is up there, right? So how do you tell this guy where everything is? You have to go to him, right? I guess I don't know what the DNS host is. It's your domain name server. But you have to tell this guy who your name server is. Now, most of us, if we've split it between the domain registrar and the web host, we tell the domain registrar that the DNS is actually, the DNS host is actually on the web hosting site. That's what's so confusing. So if you don't understand it all technically, what, and I don't understand all of it myself, I wouldn't admit to this. If, if you don't understand all this technically, my suggestion is keep your domain registrar and your web host separate. Don't put them on the same, don't get them from the same company. Okay, you're saying if, if this is your registrar and Bluehost goes down and if, and if they're, and they're acting as your DNS, so that, those are the same physically, right? Then if that's true and your website goes down, you come back over here and give it some other DNS place to go. Just move the DNS. Right, if, if your web host machine goes down, you're definitely out of business, but, you're, but you could still move it if you could get to the registrar and you can move your site and you have a backup, you just move it to another site. It'll take you five minutes and you're back up again. For a hundred and something dollars, a hundred and how much? How likely is that scenario going to be? I don't know. I don't disagree with you, but for me, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> so I don't trust them. I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. In fact, that's what security is all about. It's making layers of security. That's why you lock your, lock your cars, don't leave your keys in it, don't leave things exposed. They're all different layers. So to me, this is a layer of protection is by me distributing this. And it doesn't cost you anything to do this, it's free. So there will be differences of opinion, but I've never heard this even talked about. That's why I wanted to bring it up. So the other big mistake is people running the wrong version. This just came off of a WordPress org site. So only 42.5% are in the correct or latest version of WordPress. Isn't that interesting? So if you're not at that version, what do you need to do? You need to upgrade, right? and you need to upgrade all the plugins, same problem, right? So if you're not at that version, that means you're opening yourself up to liability to get hacked or whatever. Okay, here's another mistake. I made this mistake. How many of you running your site off of a child thing? Okay, for all of you that don't have a child thing, what happens when you, if you bought a theme, what happens if that theme gets updated? You, just, you, you may lose, depending on, depending, you may lose all of your changes. I'm sorry, I'm a newbie. What's a child theme? Oh, good question. Child theme is kind of like the parent is the main thing. I'll, I'll try to explain this in layman's terms because I, I use them, but the child theme is basically overrides, it, it, it lets you override things that are in the parent theme. That's basically what it does. So you're not actually changing any code in the main, in the main theme, you're changing the code in the child theme. So if the main parent theme gets upgraded by the company like Genesis or WooCommerce or whoever does it, 
elegant things, whoever does that, your stuff is not in their stuff. It's separated over here in this quote child thing. Can anybody else explain that better than that? It will be in your, where your themes are, you'll see your main theme, like Genesis, okay? And then if, if you've created the child theme and used Genesis, then you gave it a name. Whether you did it by a plug-in or whether you did it manually, you gave that theme a name. Does that make sense? So that's where it would be. And your active theme would be the name of that child theme. It would not be Genesis. I use Divi. My child theme is, I think I called it Divi Child or something. So if you use Divi, that's your child? No, Divi is not the child theme. My, my child theme would be, I named it Divi Child. All right, need to move on. Been given the high sign. So we did a survey the other day at work and this was the password that somebody was using. She's blonde, right? I see one blonde. They asked her why her password was like that. She said, well, they told me I had to have eight characters and at least one capital. <laughs> Point is, you need to have a hard to guess password. This one's a little SEO, I won't blow this one up, but if you look real closely, you'll see the name of this image. Does that, does that name mean anything? Did Leah talk about this earlier in the SEO? Can you talk about this? So you should have the name of every file that you have in there that's a picture should have a meaningful name on it. Not just image 001.jpg, that's not a good idea. Because it's in the URL, Google's looking at all that. It's real easy to do that. And I would change it before you uploaded it, by the way. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk about optimization also optimized. I looked at somebody's website the other day, it was taking nine seconds to load and I looked at it and it was 2.5 megabytes to load it. So their images were way too big. Now this one's an interesting one. Everybody know what a, and I can't pronounce it, Favicon, is that how you pronounce it? Everybody know what that is? It's that little teeny thing it sits up in the corner. This is out of uh, Chrome right here. It's that little guy right there. And this is out of Internet Explorer. It's that little guy right there. And it's called a favicon. And you get to make it. You can make it with, what, Photoshop? Or there's all kinds of things you can make it with. But you can also go online. And there's all kinds of free services. Just search for uh, Make Favicon. And you'll find all kinds of sites where you can upload whatever image or logo you have. And they will make a little one out of it. In the media library? I think I tried that and you can't do that. Anybody else? Yeah, that cannot rename. You have to rename them before you upload them to the library. Yeah, that's, that, okay. that, that's, that, that's right. That's what I've found. So I've had to delete it and then upload another one just like it and name it something different. Okay. And I think that's because it does all these other thumbnails behind the scenes mm -hmm. that it's also named for different size screens, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's why it just doesn't, you can't just change the name. Actually, can I, can I hold your question just a second? Not to cut you off, but let me, uh, but she gave me the high sign. That has what? That, that's a very good point. I'm not sure you can. I'm not sure you can actually upload a file name with a space in it. Can you? Anybody know? What, what is the end that people use? What's called camel case, where each word is capitalized. So you do big uh, my capital B, big capital I image. So instead of the space, you use the capital to make your eyes see the word. Because if you get to my name,
file with the camel case and then you upload it? Yes. You have that in the name that the user sees the camel case? They'll see the camel case data. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds like he has a good idea, but the bottom line is you can't, I, I don't think the reason the space is not in there, I think, and you can tell me if this is right or not, is because you're on a Unix system. Unix does not like, you're on Apache, you're on, they don't like spaces. You're not using the MyCamp. Not using what? The MyCamp. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I'm not used to using this. You could tell. Okay, here's one that doesn't have a favorite button. So this site does not have one. See what you see? You don't see anything. So you're not taking advantage of it. What about on, anybody know how this works on iPhone? I did this one, MailChimp. So I saved the MailChimp homepage through Safari to the desktop. Now this is something I did not know about until I started researching this a little bit. That's not a favorite That is another standard. So there's a different standard for iPhone, Droid, um, and I think for Windows 8, there are different standards for all of those. So to do it right, you have to have all of those files on your system. So no matter what anybody does, that file, it'll come up in either Explorer, Chrome, it'll come up on the iPhone, the Droid, or a Windows 8, or a Chromebook, or whatever. And I did not know that even existed. So there's more than just the favor card. So here's some other mistakes we won't talk about them. It's close to the end. No security plug-in, obviously, is a, a, not a good thing. Two-factor authentication, that's where when you sign on your own site, you gotta get a, get a message or a text on your phone and then put that code in. There's a really cool one I could tell you about called Clef. If you never checked it out, check out Clef, C-L-E-F. It actually allows your phone to look at the screen and the camera on your phone looks at the screen and then tells your website that you're the right person that's looking at this thing. The only disadvantage is you better have your phone with you. Uh, SEO plug-in, how many people have SEO plug-ins and they don't have, they're not configured? It's not going to do you any good if it's not configured. Uh, a lot of people have cheap hosting for their business, so they'll buy the cheapest hosting they can get for $3.95 and they're running a, uh, you know, $100,000, $200,000, quarter million dollar website on a $3.95 hosting plan. Probably not a good idea. Um, updating a live site, I don't know how many of you have done that before, that's probably not a good idea either. So what you might want to ask for when you're looking for hosting is do they have, and the simplest thing to do is ask if they have staging. Staging. Do they have a staging site? And SiteGround's got it, uh, WP, well it's not free, it depends on the level that you're at. And like WP um, Engine, they have it. And all those, all those guys have that. Another one, you could probably get in a disagreement on this one, but I would never use your web host as your email service. In other words, don't have your web host that's hosting, don't have your web host also hosting your email. Because you can host your email with your domain someplace else. You can host it at, you can host it at Google or Gmail. It doesn't have to have a Gmail address. It could be yourname.com and, and they'll host it. Uh, last one is, no, or next to the last one, no site monitoring. I see that one all the time. Nobody, nobody's monitoring their site. You don't know when it went down unless somebody calls you. If you use um, Jetpack, it has a monitoring piece in there. Ping has a monitoring piece in there. Uh, last one is no search. How many websites have you gone to and you can't find the search? What a real opportunity loss, right? So here's some things that I suggest, and, I, and I'm working on all these myself. The first is join a WordPress community. If all of you, if none of you, some of you here don't belong to a WordPress meetup group, that's a good way to learn some of this stuff. Um, and after talking up here and speaking for the first time, I'd say putting together a presentation, I learned some things. And then the second one, I've always done this, I call it ABC, always be curating. Find you some tool that when you're, when you're look, looking at stuff online that you can save it. Maybe you don't read it, but you know, you know, I might have that problem someday. So you save it. And you might use, I use um, Evernote. There's also a thing called Pocket. Anybody use Pocket? 
your pocket, Evernote. There's all kinds of things that you can save those with. And the last one is create a checklist. So create your own checklist. Uh, Judy Knight's talking this afternoon. She has a she has a checklist on her website. I'm drawing a blank on what her website name is now. She has a checklist. Borrow somebody else's to get started. So my presentation will be at that URL when I upload it later today. And my presentation probably won't do you much good because it's all pictures. But I'll make you one offer. This is not commercial. But I'm putting together a checklist. I think my checklist now has about 65 mistakes. Well, actually, I actually had about 100. I think I've gotten it down to 65. So I'm going to put it together. It's kind of a beta release. So if you want a copy of it before I even release it, send me an email at that, that address, and I'll send you the, the rough draft. If you've got any ideas or you've got some stories that can go along with any of those, let me know. If you've got one I haven't heard of, and I think it's a good one, I'll put it in there and put your URL in there. And so just do, just send me an email and tell me that you'd like to have the draft copy, no charge. So thank you very much. It's lunchtime.